Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to finish filming part two of the Q&A. This Q&A is mainly for dental hygiene school. So if you're interested in that, we'll just go ahead and get right into it again. First question, any tips for finding patients? I am seriously, seriously struggling. Probably one of the number one questions that I get and I need to make an in-depth video on this as well. Um, but let me just tell you, reach out to your family and friends, reach out to people at your church, at your like local areas that you're at. Don't be scared to ask people, make business cards, put them everywhere, put them at your doctor's office, put them at your, wherever the heck you go on a regular basis, put it there, put them um, with your hairdresser, download the next door app that connects you with people in your area near your area and advertise be like hey this is how much it costs come be my patient post on Facebook well, that is my last thing like last resort post on Facebook people on Facebook are not reliable okay people that you don't know are not reliable period I the people that didn't show up on me were always 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 people from Facebook so be very wary of doing that that's like last resort like I have nobody in my chair and you know what I mean so um, I'll make a more in-depth video on that I promise I know that is one that I need to do but those are like the basics of finding patients for sure what do you do to stay motivated so I stay motivated by making sure that I take breaks um, so if I am just constantly constantly you know cracking up my to-do list absolutely not my brain is gonna be like shut down like no I'm sorry we cannot do this anymore we're done I stay motivated by just like focusing on the end goal taking my breaks so that I'm still feeling alive I'm not feeling like this zombie who's just like trudging through the dark forest you know what I'm saying I just really feel like you just got to keep that good mindset in your brain take your breaks so that you're not getting burnt out and just focus on the end goal imagine yourself at the end imagine yourself at a dental office working in the perfect office making the money that you want to make don't focus on like you know what's happening right now like obviously you're gonna have to get your work done you're gonna have to you know push through and it's really really hard when you're in the middle of all of that stress and you know deadlines and everything of that nature it's easy to just be like oh my gosh I'm in this deep dark cave and I never know when I'm getting out but the light at the end of the tunnel does get there I promise and it will still be worth it in the end you just got to focus on why you started and think about it that way and that's really what helped me stay motivated and just keep trying to not let yourself get into these mental ruts because your your how you think is really really important is going through the application process as scary as it seems you definitely got to make sure that you know you get everything in there that you need to get in there but no the application process wasn't scary at all for me I just filled out my paperwork I wrote my personal statement I just made sure that my application was as good as it could be just remain positive and just you know you already did all the work whenever you're applying you've already taken all the prereqs you've already done everything so now you just got to have faith and trust that you'll get in and if not just keep pushing if that's your goal was it hard to remember classes of dental caries um in the beginning yeah i got confused uh for sure but that's such a like minuscule piece of information in the grand scheme of things and it's kind of like the same thing like memorizing like you know the teeth and like the anatomy of the teeth and stuff it's kind of just the same like memorization how would you advise to study case studies in dental hygiene are they really as important as they seem well they are definitely important. There's 150 questions on the national board exam that are 100% case studies. So I would highly recommend just knowing the base material as much as you know, you know what I mean? Like you obviously have to have a good foundation of oral pathology, of just like general health in general, like blood pressure is a big, big thing that you must know. Conditions that require pre-med and like all sorts of different things. You just need to have that baseline knowledge to be able to, you know, answer case studies. And my best advice for that would be, you know, after you have known all your information don't try to study for boards too early don't try to do case studies too early if you're in your first semester there's no reason for you to do that you need to be done with pathology with radiology you need to be done with everything you know before you start studying for case studies and studying for boards so don't start until you have all of that baseline information of pharmacology oral pathology radiology you know what I mean like you anatomy like you need to know all of that stuff before you can actually do case studies so the best way to study for that would just be to practice there's a lot of case study practices as far as apps that you can download things online books that have a lot of case studies in it so I would just recommend doing that for sure what's your best advice for online classes so online classes are super 
easy to get behind on, easy to kind of be like, oh, I'll do it later because you're not physically there. So, and it's easy to also just miss information because you didn't see it. I'm taking all online classes right now, what I do is I print out the syllabus, the topic outline, like I print out everything. Even if I'm not gonna physically use it, I print it all out initially so that I can go in my planner and write down when every single little thing is due, when tests are, and I just plan out like when am I gonna study, when am I gonna do my work, and that's just the best thing that I can advise is just be as organized as you possibly can. Organization is really key. You don't have someone being like, hey, next class, remember there's this. So you really just gotta like be diligent and write down everything that is due and just be very very uh, careful with when you're going to do your assignments and everything of that nature. How did you organize all of your notes from the first year to study for boards? So that's another thing that was really really good for me for having an iPad because I had all of my notes in my iPad. I didn't have like you know PowerPoints strode everywhere and different binders everywhere. I had everything in one space in my iPad. Also I really didn't study my notes that much for for boards. I mainly used like a board review book. So so yeah I would go back for like specific information but like generally I used like a big board review book. I just got accepted and I'm so so excited. I'm also worried it'll be too much for me. Any advice? So my advice to anybody is watch my video on I'll link it right here on if you just got accepted in dental hygiene school there's my advice but my number one advice is just take one day at a time don't think that it's going to be too much for you don't tell yourself that it's going to be too much for you your mindset is super super important whenever it comes to things like that so just stay positive and know that you are exactly where you're supposed to be and just take one day at a time. Of course, it's overwhelming for anybody who's gonna be in a hard program like that, but you can do it and you're there for a reason and just, you know, focus on that. Don't focus on that it's gonna be too much for you because it's not, you will make it through one day at a time. What do you wish you knew before starting hygiene school? So this is a great question and I wish that I knew that it would go by super fast. I, as you know, was not into it i wanted to leave i want like i'm not trying to sit here and hang out i'm not um i'm not trying to sit here and spend all my time here like i want to go home and after i've been here for 10 hours i'm over it i just wish that i remember that it would that it does go by really fast and even though it's hard it goes by really fast and so just really remember that when you're in the thick of it like this is gonna fly by, so maybe I should enjoy the parts that I can. Maybe I should enjoy, you know, sitting here and learning clock positions with my friends. Maybe I should sit here and just take a breath instead of being so stressed. Maybe I should appreciate my teachers for being a little hard on me because they're making me better. Maybe I should stop looking at everything with like, a, oh, this is horrible, I don't wanna be here, I don't wanna do this, and looking at it with like, wow, I'm here, I'm in hygiene school. I This is what I've been working on for so long. And just really like kind of being in the moment instead of always trying to get away from it and always trying to be like, oh, this is so hard. I just wanna go home. I just wanna go to bed. I'm so tired. I don't wanna study. I don't wanna do this. And like really just like be in the moment and be like, wow, like this is gonna go by so fast. And so I just, I wish that I was in the moment more and that I was appreciative of being there more. Not that I wasn't, just I feel like there's a difference between just trying to get through it and really being present through it. And I wish that I was more present through it and that I just really had approached it with a different posture. How do you afford all of your bills while in hygiene school since you aren't able to work? So the thing is, is having a family member, a friend, a boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, mom, dad, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, somebody who can help you save as much money as you can, work as much as you can before you start the semester, take out loans if you have to for school, if you have to as a last resort, apply for scholarships, all of that stuff will help you be able to pay your bills and just live you know, for those two years. It's definitely stressful, it's definitely hard whenever that stress is on you, but try to figure it out before you start school and have a plan for that. It's not easy and if you have to work like weekends or something, you know, if you have no option, then obviously Obviously, you can probably make that work to help yourself out, but I would just really try to do that. So the next question is, are your classes with dental hygiene students or are y'all mixed in with other majors? Mine was just dental hygiene students and it was just my class. So just the class of 2020, it was only us all day, every day, only us. I don't know how other schools are, but that's how mine was. How did you meet your fiance? 
Wow, not a dental hygiene school question. Um, I know I didn't make like an announcement online or anything, but I am engaged. So I am engaged to my longtime boyfriend. We were dating for we're dating for five and a half years, and he proposed to me on his birthday and told me it's the best birthday present he could have ever asked for. Oh, I can't. But we met through a mutual friend. We actually, we met a few times at like get-togethers and stuff like that, and then one night he had a, a get together at his house or something like that and I got invited and we literally talked for like 12 hours that night it's crazy but um yeah super happy we're getting married in less than eight months now I think so it's crazy I'm really excited how did you balance your boyfriend and school so again I would just schedule it in I know it sounds crazy to schedule in free time but I promise you that is like my number one piece of advice because you will burn out you need to schedule it in as much as you're scheduling in you're studying and things that are important well guess what your alone time your breathers your relationships your mom whoever the heck those people are important too and that is important to your mental well-being so just as much as studying for that test is important you scheduling in your downtime and the times that you're going to have in your relationships or when you're going to have alone time and watch a movie it's just as important so just remember that is there a good way to plan for multiple tests in one week i find it hard to manage study time so what i would do with this is i would just make sure that i study for the first test that i have first so I would look at it and I would see like how many days do I have? Am I going to spend this much time, this much time, this much time? I would calculate the amount of times that I was studying, the amount of hours I was studying for each test. So I would be like, okay, I'm studying three hours for this test on this day and two hours for this test. And I would literally calculate and make sure I was putting in enough time for each one of those tests and just do it that way. I know that's really hard having multiple tests in a week, but it is the reality of hygiene school, unfortunately. So I hope that helps a little bit. I know that was kind of like scattered, but um, like I said, I'll... We'll make that video on how like I studied and I'll go into depth with that as well. Hey guys, it is several hours later and I just realized that I left out like 10 questions. So I wanted to come back on here. I know, you know, it's not as good of a setup, but I feel like the information is what's important and I just want to get that out there. So I'm going to go over the last nine questions because I totally, totally overlooked these and I think that they're good questions. So the first one is, how did you deal with performance tests? I get so nervous, sweaty, and shaky hands. And I think that I addressed this a little bit in the part one of this Q&A, the other video, that your mindset is so important. I feel like we we let our bodies control us sometimes and we're like oh my gosh oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm so nervous i'm but like i've really learned and done a lot of like research and everything on like our brains lately and it is so important what you're telling yourself obviously you're still going to be nervous you're still going to have those nerves you know that underlying because your your body knows that you're about to go in for a test but what you're telling yourself is so so important if you're telling yourself oh my gosh i'm so nervous i'm not prepared i'm not ready for this i don't know am i gonna like you know am i even gonna pass that is just not helpful at all so you really really do need to go in there with confidence there's a reason why that saying fake it till you make it is a thing because it's the truth and it's just really 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 important for tests and things like that to go in there with an attitude like you have got this especially if you're talking about performance tests like a scaling or exploring or whatever your teacher is sitting there watching you it's really really important to just prepare well practice so that you know that you're prepared that way you can tell yourself i'm prepared for this i have got this I am okay and really just try to not build it up so much I feel like it's easy to build stuff up and just be like oh this is such a big deal but like really like take a step back and look at things and be like okay no I'm prepared for this I studied for this I did this and I really feel like how you talk to yourself your body will kind of like adjust because you're telling yourself that you're good. You're telling yourself that you've got this. If you're sitting there telling yourself, oh no, oh no, oh no, your body's gonna react in that way. But if you're telling yourself, I got this, I got this, I got this, even if you don't fully believe it, that's still what you're telling your body and your brain and your body are gonna react in that way. So I really think your mindset is that, that crucial. Did your class have a lot of people drop out midway through? I heard a lot of dental hygiene programs do. Yes, a lot of dental hygiene programs do have that happen. Mine did not have that happen. We had one person drop out halfway through and I think the year before us they had everybody graduate but the year before that they had a lot drop out like maybe half so it really just depends. It depends on people's lives, what they can deal with, what they you know what I mean like 
you don't know the level of determination that those people had like was this a second choice to them type thing so I wouldn't like let that deter you from doing it I would highly recommend to anyone who isn't positive before they get into the program to shadow even if your school doesn't require you to shadow go shadow a dental hygienist go shadow like in a dentist office so you know what this environment is like multiple days see what the environment is like and be sure that this is what you want to do and this is an environment that you can see yourself in before I started whenever I decided okay I'm gonna take prereqs for dental hygiene I was like okay, I'm gonna go get a job. Like I had front office work, so I decided I was gonna go get a job in the front office of a dental office while I take my prereqs to be sure that this is an environment that I wanna be in every day of my life. And so um, I think it's important, obviously you don't have to go out and get a job or anything like that, but I do think that it's very important to know the type of field that you're going into and you know what exactly you're going to encounter on a daily basis and if that's something that you want to do get in there and observe a srp and a deep a deep cleaning and see you know what exactly this entails can i deal with the blood can i deal with the smell it's not all ooh toothy i'm so toothy like that's what social media makes it be but that's not what it is it's blood and it's smell and it's it's not all glitz and glam so be sure that that's you know something that you can see yourself being in and i think that would in turn if people did that it would lessen the amount of people that drop out of the program how do you remember everything for the performance test and how did you prepare if you're talking about the performance test like the clinical exam that it's literally the same thing as cleaning teeth in your clinic so there's not like a bunch of stuff that you you know have to remember like you've already been doing this for two years so basically you just go in you clean teeth and you leave you know so there's not like a whole bunch of stuff i didn't really have to do anything to prepare for it other than you know knowing what teeth i was gonna submit really there's not too much preparation for that exam as opposed to the national which is all of those crazy you know 350 question tests the next question is i'm taking my clinical dental hygiene board in december what is your biggest piece of advice after having gone through it uh, my biggest piece of advice for the clinical hygiene exam would be to submit an extra tooth or two if you think that you'll be able to do it. As far as credits, you get a major point deduction from your treatment selection being rejected. So if I submit a certain amount of teeth and they reject it, that's immediately seven points off. If I submit another one and they reject it, that's immediately another seven points off. So now we're already 14 points off and you haven't even scaled a tooth yet. It's crazy to me, and I will make a video on this in the future, that your tooth selection, like if you miss a spot of calculus, it's five points. But if I didn't choose, like if this level of calculus is sufficient to me but not sufficient to the examiner, I get seven points off, seven points. It's just mind blowing to me, it makes no sense to me, I, I, I'm I'm not gonna go on a tangent with that because you guys know I have a video coming for that for that situation but my biggest piece of advice would be to add an extra tooth or two you do not want them to reject you do not want to start seven or 14 points in the negative whenever you're going to take this test submit at least seven teeth at least and if you think that you can do more like don't over exert yourself don't be like oh i'm immediately submitting 10 teeth because i don't want to get rejected like make an educated decision but don't under select your teeth give yourself an extra tooth or two so that just in case what you think is sufficient in case they don't think it's sufficient you have backed yourself up with an extra tooth or two so that they don't reject your teeth selection more on that later Make sure you're subscribed. Probing is so hard for me. I am always off when instructors check behind me by so many millimeters. Any suggestions? So I actually had an issue with probing too. Um, in the beginning, I would always be a little bit off. And the thing too that you have to remember is that some teachers are heavy handed. They are. Some teachers are heavy handed. Some teachers are light handed. And I just always saw like discrepancies between teachers where I would always, always, always be like, too shallow like they would always either be way 
over me or way under me sometimes so you do have to remember that too but practice is what's really gonna help you and just getting the angulation especially between like the call in between the teeth that is really important to make sure that you're doing the angulation correctly so I would look like in your textbook and look at like a diagram and see exactly how you're supposed to be angling it in between the teeth that was the issue that I had the most did you ever feel like your instructors contradicted each other and or the book yes Absolutely. I did all the time. Not because they were bad or anything like that, but that's just something that happened a good amount of times. And it's a lot, 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 lot of information to know, even as a teacher, especially whenever you have newer teachers that have been out in the world practicing and then they come in to be a teacher and they haven't been in school for 20 years. And, um, you know, they're trying to like relearn details that they didn't necessarily have to know when they were in private practice for 20 years. So, um, yeah, definitely there, there can be discrepancies and I wouldn't I don't know if you're asking so that you can be like oh no you're not right I would just take those teachers especially if there's like one teacher in particular that isn't always right choose your battles like don't try to correct them I would just look in the book and go by what the book says because that's what you're going to be tested on that's what you're going to be tested on for the MBDHE that's what you need to know unless unless something has been updated like blood pressure or something like that I would choose my battles don't correct your teacher unless it's like, you know, you're getting in trouble for something, obviously then defend yourself. But I would just choose my battles and be sure that you know, you, I mean, you need to know this information for yourself, for your patients. And so just make sure that you know what's correct and don't worry about like the discrepancy between teachers. Did you have an actual board review class? And if so, was it actually beneficial? I know I keep saying I'm making all these videos, but I promise one of the next videos that I'm making is how I studied for the MBDHE. And yes, I did go to a board review. I found the book very beneficial, but I did not find sitting in lecture for three days beneficial at all. Not even a little bit. They basically just read straight from the book. I mean, the only thing that's beneficial is they say board alert this week will be on your board you know this is always on the boards make sure you know this that's the only thing that's like beneficial as far as going but I think it's a giant waste of time and if you're traveling it's a giant waste of money unless you specifically learn and review well by lecture if you benefit from sitting there from 6 a.m to 6 p.m someone reading a book to you by all means go for it. And then the last question is, are you looking to work in a private or corporate office? I want to work in a private office for sure. I would probably consider corporate if I wasn't able to get benefits through my future husband because I think benefits are really important. And so it just depends if I can find a private office with benefits and that would be like even more amazing. But yeah, right now, yeah, I would prefer to work in a private office. I did work in corporate whenever I worked at like the front office of a dental office I worked in corporate and I would prefer to work in a private office but I am not like totally against it I mean I'll work wherever's a good office with a good dentist that will pay me well and appreciate me so yeah I hope that you guys enjoyed this q and A. I I try to do them every so often you guys have such great questions so if you have any for the next Q&A you can leave them down below or dm me on instagram at the paleo rdh yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it I will see you guys so so soon on the next one I love you guys so much and I thank you for your support more than you even know. Bye.